Great, good afternoon and uh, thanks everyone for spending your time with us today. I hope everyone's having a fantastic Data and AI Summit so far. I'm Peter Kennedy from Confluent and I'm gonna talk with you uh, today about modernizing to a cloud-based infrastructure and how Databricks and Confluent unlock and accelerate value within these workloads. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping pieces. Uh, the presentation and recording will be made available after the conference for anyone to further digest or share with colleagues that aren't able to attend. Uh, today we have a few different sections to go through. Uh, so we'll start off with some market context and set the tone for why and how Confluent and Databricks uh, work together and why this is a match made in heaven. Uh, we will then drill into specific use cases. A lot of companies are trying to modernize and migrate their data stack uh, by moving to the cloud. And we want to show how Confluent and Databricks can accelerate your journey to the cloud and run real-time analytics. Uh, next, we'll show what it looks like in practice. Uh, we'll be demonstrating a financial services use case, and then we'll finish up with uh, some Q&A if we have time. All right, so let's jump right in. So this is probably not a shocker to anyone in the room here today, but data is transforming the world. There's unprecedented growth in the volumes of data being generated by businesses today. Regardless of industry, better data management and better data translates into more informed strategic decision making. It's now essential for enterprises to be able to contextualize and harness the value of their data and have real-time insights into how their businesses are performing, enabling data teams to react quickly uh, with operational decisions in response to market conditions from anywhere at any time. So whether through our interactions with mobile applications, powering real-time metrics for rocket ships, getting real-time updates on a construction site, or witnessing our doctor collaborate across the world digitally, our interactions with the world are immersed with data. So in essence, data is helping the world build rich front-end customer experiences. Nowadays, brands are built and defined by their customer experience. Consumers are demanding better services and better incorporation of technology. They're used to easy access of social media, video streaming entertainment services, as well as mobile devices and expect that next level of sophistication in all aspects of their life. At the same time, data is enabling new methods for running your business efficiently and effectively. Data is the lifeblood that helps firms bring all their services together in the cloud. Firms need to be able to consolidate data from a variety of applications and services to be able to answer questions from business in real time. Data is helping companies move towards real-time backend operations to drive scale and have the decision-making agility required in today's world. Today's organizations need a modern cloud data, data strategy that includes data in motion to enrich operations to be increasingly agile, elastic, cost-efficient, all at scale. Confluent has the technology, experience, support, and uh, to make these types of outcomes possible for any organization anywhere in the world. And this has opened up a number of possibilities in every industry. Look at all these use cases. Inventory management in retail, connected patient records in healthcare, real-time fraud detection for financial services, advanced navigation in automotive industries. The use cases are limitless, and organizations that powerfully harness their data, whether that analytical or contextual, will moment by moment, will be the ones creating the innovations that will drive the economy of the future. Together, Databricks and Confluent enable hundreds of use cases across industries. But for a moment, let's focus on financial services. We work with hundreds of organizations in the financial services industry, ranging from retail and commercial banks to hedge funds and emerging fintech innovators. Many of these organizations are looking to apply advanced analytics to their large volumes of customer and transactional data to reduce risk, boost returns, and improve customer satisfaction. Some of the use cases include improved investment decision, maximizing returns with AI-powered insights based on billions of market signals and alternative data sources, personalized banking, delivering the right financial products and guidance at the right time with real-time customer insights and predictive analytics, fraud protection, detecting and preventing fraudulent activity like money laundering or credit card fraud and so on by leveraging machine learning to predict anomaly, anonymous anomalies in real time. Now, in order to unlock these use cases, many companies are moving to a modern cloud data platform because their traditional on-prem systems don't after, often offer the capabilities they now need. 
And for good reason, too. When we look at the benefits of the cloud, this makes a lot of sense. It offers agility, elasticity, cost savings, faster deployment time so that you can bring more data and analytic techniques to bear to solve these extremely challenging problems. Organizations need a stepping stone as they migrate and modernize their data. So specifically, they need a platform for data movement that delivers both familiarity and portability while helping them drive real-time event streaming and ETL pipelines across any environment. As you, as you build cloud analytics and applications with your new cloud stack, data streaming is a critical component to this stack. Data infrastructure is being reimagined to seamlessly harness the flow of data across all apps, databases, SaaS layers, and cloud systems. Being able to connect to all these data interactions and events gets them to the cloud services that need to power those front end experiences and back end operations is where Confluent comes into the picture. It's an entirely new paradigm that is purpose-built for the digital economy and the expectation of data in real time. Here, data is not static or passive, data is in motion. All companies, completely, all companies are completely rethinking their data architecture. Like Citibank, for example, who said, we need to shift our thinking from everything at rest to everything in motion. So as businesses rethink their data infrastructure strategy, they have an opportunity to rethink how they build data pipelines. Confluence data streaming platform eliminates the need for point-to-point -point connections and provides a singular, global, real-time data plane instead, enabling you to unlock value from the systems, applications, and data stores that run across any number of global environments and streams that data in the real-time wherever it needs to go. With Confluent, enterprises can easily integrate existing systems and modernize their data platform at their own pace, all while using the programming language of choice to build streaming applications that can feed into their cloud data platform. Confluent is deeply integrated with all cloud service providers for unified management, services, billing, while allowing organizations to cost-effectively retain data at any scale with infinite storage. So let's move on uh, to how Confluent and Databricks work together. So first, some context. We see that in general, organizations have struggled with data and I. They are in various levels of maturity trying to move from one end of the maturity curve to the other. One of the fundamental challenges that these organizations face at this particular maturity curve is broken in the middle. If you look at the technology stack for what happened, you traditionally have data warehouses where people have added data to the data warehouse, creating dashboards where the BI users are acting on the data that is already in the warehouse. Now more and more companies are adopting data lakes, where you have data in various systems that is both structured and unstructured, all in a cloud data lake. This is where organizations are trying to create and unlock that next value of, value of data uh, by using AI and ML technologies to determine what will happen. Having both of these stacks is very, very challenging for these organizations. First, as data is split across the two tech, tech stacks, you have much more structured data in the warehouse in the form of tables. And then in the data, data lake, of course, you have much more unstructured data. In turn, making it very difficult to run updates on subsets of data and run advanced analytics and maintain good data hygiene. The second major challenge is with respect to governance. These two tech stacks have different security models that are incompatible, making it a huge challenge to be able to maintain them both. Now finally, you have the different types of use cases that are being supported. With Data Warehouse supporting more of the business intelligence and analytic use cases, and Data Lakes supporting the data science and streaming use cases, all of these challenges together have made it difficult for organizations to get the full value from their data. So this is where data lake, or Databricks Lakehouse architecture simplifies the barriers for realizing full data value. With data real, residing in the cloud data lake on the service provider of choice, coupled with Delta Lake on top providing performance, in addition to a single security model across all your data with Unity Catalog, the Lakehouse platform also supports all use cases from data warehousing to data science and is built on open source standard and available to use across all major clouds. So using Databricks with Confluent enables you to support all the real-time streaming use cases to ingest data from various sources and land data directly in the Lakehouse with simplified architecture to accelerate your business operations and customer experiences. 
So let's talk about how organizations are getting their data to the White House with Confluent and Databricks. Primarily, this means traditional on-prem systems to the cloud-based uh, data warehouse offering within the data lake environment. However, legacy data warehouses were designed for static on-prem installations and not purpose-built for the cloud. In turn, creating limiting factors for the speed at which businesses can make decisions and innovate in today's dynamic, digital-first, event-driven environment. Traditional self-managed data warehouses are difficult and expensive to operate at scale. You need to consider computing resources, storage capacity, patching the underlying infrastructure, not to mention integrating with other systems is non-trivial and scaling is slow at best. So the challenge of migrating your data warehouse is not insignificant. First, you've got cost. Making everything accessible using unfederated or federated queries and providing access to multiple systems is expensive in both compute power and operational overhead. So making the total cost of ownership as low as possible when creating pipelines is a really important key to these modernization strategies. Second, with legacy systems, it usually takes time for your data, data to be ready for analysis, thanks to layers of batch processing. Some systems do offer limited real-time capabilities, but these often do not scale well. So again, during this migration and modernization initiative, there is a really important opportunity to rethink how the cloud data pipelines are being built to power those real-time analytics and make sure that the user experience is as seamless as possible. Finally, these systems, some of which were maybe set up decades ago, do not support hybrid or multi-cloud architectures. So all these challenges get even more complicated when you have to support hybrid or multi-cloud environments. These migrations and modernizations might take multiple years to untangle that Teradata or Cloudera instance, and you need to have that consistency from a business perspective running both systems for a period of time. Or maybe there is an on-prem data source that will need to live on forever due to a security or a governance perspective. So being able to make those connections across those systems is very important. A full lift and shift could take years. However, with Confluent, this all becomes tenable. We can lower your TCO, or total cost of ownership, of modernization by helping you build a hybrid and multi-cloud pipeline by moving ETL jobs to stream processing. We lower costs on two front. Confluent Cloud Console is a fully managed service, reducing the cost to build, manage, and maintain pipelines. The other front is being able to do some pre-processing or prepping or cleansing of the data before, before it lands in destinations like data lakes. Also, by moving away from batch processing, we get, an we get our analytics in near real time at any scale. So being able to provide personalized experience for you, your users, being able to reduce that time to detect anomalies, all becomes much, much easier. Finally, by replicating data in fully managed Confluent Cloud, we quickly integrate our data with other cloud provider services. So you're not stuck with a tool that can only get your data to a single point of destination. It allows you to power additional services with the data that is flowing through Confluent. So let's drill into the actual technology behind this value prop. So when you look at the architecture, there are a few key components and important ones to call out for discussion for what this looks like in practice. First, our connectors. Being able to connect from a legacy data source like Teradata or databases, as well as those net new sources like IoT sensors or cloud SaaS applications into our platform from a connector standpoint is really, really valuable. Then next, being able to process that data with Kafka streams and finally pushing that data out to environments like Databricks using our fully managed sync connectors creates a really smooth migration and modernization process that has the flexibility to meet you where you are on your journey to the cloud. So let's double click into a few of these. Confluent has expanded on those open source Kafka connectors to fully increase the number of available data sources and sync options in order to move data into and out of Kafka. A, de a developer working on open source Apache Kafka will have essentially two options. Develop their own connectors using the Kafka Connect framework or leverage the aforementioned open source connectors already built by the community. Now the challenge with this first option is that time and effort is substantial. In 2019, Confluent increased its connector portfolio from approximately 10 connectors to over 100, and these were fully supported connectors. 
Through this experience, we measured that it takes an average of six weeks for an FDE to be able to develop one single connector. And this was at a time that we were doing this by, with the world uh, experts on Kafka. The challenge with the second option is that all these open source connectors will be unsupported. This would generate significant risk for an organization deploying Kafka and event streaming into production. What would happen if something breaks? What would the organization feel comfortable about fixing this issue without the help of experts? This is why Confluent offers a portfolio of over 120 connectors, 100 of which are developed and supported by Confluent, and approximately 20 which are developed and supported by partners and fully validated by Confluent. You can run these connectors yourself anywhere, including the edge, using Confluent Platform or fully managed on Confluent Cloud. This makes it really easy for you to be able to build and move data across Confluent without having to manage these pipelines yourself. Now you can focus on building those applications and analytics on Databricks and not worrying about how you're getting your data to Databricks in real time. I would also like to again emphasize Confluent runs everywhere. This really helps with the modernization initiative. From a Raspberry Pi to a monster bare metal server or anything in between, Confluent works. Our customers can choose between a fully managed cloud product on any of the major cloud providers or a software product they can run themselves in their own data centers, or of course, both. You can also interconnect these into a global central nervous system for data in motion. And this is becoming a critical component on the cloud migration strategy for many of our largest customers because it allows these new applications to connect their input and output data back into the existing legacy system that's on-prem without requiring a big migration all at once. Both Confluent Cloud and Confluent Platform are subscription-based products where the spend scales as usage scales, so you only pay for what you're using. Now, double-clicking on the stream processing capabilities that are offered, we have a few different flavors. This is based on what you are trying to accomplish, either from a flexibility or a simplicity perspective. So Kafka clients. We had a wide variety of clients available to Kafka, so whatever your programming language of choice is, there's a Kafka client for it, so that you can build those real-time data processing streams directly within Confluent. Then we have k-streams, which simplifies this, and then k-sql db, which even simplifies it further. KSQL DB is a SQL interface to Kafka Stream so that any user that is familiar with SQL can come in and quickly create those joins, materialized views, or aggregate data prior to the data hitting the source destination. If you know the variables are going to be constant and will need to be created on a regular cadence. And we've made this even easier by recently launching KSQL DB recipes. So if you go to developer.confluent.io slash tutorials, you can take a look at these different recipes that we have. These are vertical and domain specific to help you accelerate your data streaming needs. So if you want to help your organizi organization detect unusual credit card behavior or detect DDoS attacks using KSQL DB, you can jump in there and take a look at these tutorials. Now the cool thing here is that there's actually code snippets in all of these so that you can push this stuff directly to Confluent Cloud, making it as easy as possible to adopt KSQL DB around these use cases. And all this can be pushed to Databricks for further analysis and advanced analytics. So with all that being said, I want to switch gears and share a demo, which will illustrate with more detail what this looks like in practice. So what we're going to be covering as part of our demo is to illustrate a financial services use case where many financial services organizations uh, are, are challenged with fraud. In this particular use case, a uh, financial services um, organization um, has, has a large ATM network, automated teller machine network, uh, and they've seen an increase in fraud uh, across the transactions. So they need a solution to detect and prevent fraudulent transactions. The stakeholders at this financial services organization have decided to use Databricks and leverage uh, machine learning algorithms for anomaly detection to both detect the fraud and prevent the fraudulent transactions. In order to put this solution in place, um, they're going to need a, a number of different um, source um, 
data sources uh, from their Oracle transactional systems. They're going to need uh, the underlying ATM transactions, uh, metadata that includes the locations, uh, other details in terms of you know specific details on their ATM um, uh, network product suite. Um, and this particular financial institution is using Salesforce for their CRM. So from their um, Salesforce um, instance, they're going to need uh, entities like accounts and contacts, details about their customers. And um, we're going to be using Confluent Cloud um, for storing uh, these different um, data sources on different Kafka topics. And we're going to be using the following connectors uh, to source this data. So we're going to be using the Oracle CDC connector um, to source the data. Uh, CDC stands for Change Data Capture to source the data from their on-prem Oracle 19 um, system. And then they're going to be using the Salesforce um, CDC, Confluent Salesforce CDC connector for sourcing data from the accounts and contacts entities. Um, they'll be using KSQL DB um, to apply different patterns. In this particular case, they're going to be applying a, an enrichment uh, pattern where they're going to be joining two streams of data together. So they'll be joining the uh, transactional data with the location data uh, to enrich in that data for the downstream systems, which in this case, we're talking about um, landing that data in Delta Lake tables. So we'll be using the Databricks Delta, uh, Confluent Databricks Delta Lake sync connector for landing that data in Delta Lake tables. So I'm going to switch over to the Confluent Cloud user interface. I'll go ahead and log in. And when we log in, we, we see Confluent Cloud. We also see Health Plus, which uh, provides capability of monitoring your uh, on-prem Confluent clusters. In this case, we're going to be using a, a Confluent Cloud cluster. Uh, when we first log in, we, we see what are called environments. Environments are really um, a mechanism for categorizing your clusters. Uh, many of our customers uh, would create environments uh, for the different deployment environments you know, consistent with their development life cycle. For example, dev, test, staging, what have you. Or you can organize your clusters by you know, application teams or particular business units. That's really up to you. Um, it's really easy to create a cluster. It's just a matter of clicking on add cluster. You can also do this via the command line interface or API. Uh, you choose your, your type of cluster for production workloads. We, we recommend uh, dedicated clusters for this. Uh, just showing you how easy it is to set up a cluster. I'll, I'll select standard cluster. Uh, you choose your cloud provider. Um, we support all three cloud prov providers as TJ mentioned before. And then you choose which, which particular cloud region that you want to deploy your cluster to. Um, in this case, we'll just go with uh, Ohio US East 2. And then your availability zone. So that that's, um, specifies that the underlying infrastructure would be distributed across uh, different availability zones um, to, to prevent in, in the rare case of uh, uh, loss of a, a particular availability zone. Uh, and then it's just a, a matter of clicking, you know, naming your cluster and, and launching uh, your, your cluster. So in, in this case, we're going to use um, a cluster that I've previously created. And we're going to take a look at the end to end flow. So as I mentioned before, we're using KSQL DB, uh, which is uh, a mechanism for applying different streaming patterns. Uh, in this case, as I mentioned before, we're, we're joining ATM transactions flowing across, we can see those transactions flowing across on the right there. 
Uh, and then we've got our locations data, which is like a, a fact table or, or metadata uh, that basically you know, has details about our different ATM locations. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, is, is join those two streams together. And, and again, this is happening live, you know, as the transactions are flowing across, we're creating a, a, a new real time stream. And if we look at the syntax associated um, with, with creating this new stream, it, it looks very much like SQL. It's a SQL like syntax. Uh, we're, we're specifying the, the two streams that we want to use here. Uh, and then we're specifying the different attributes that we want in our new stream. And then we, we can take a quick look here and we see our new, you know, enriched stream coming across. So that's a combination of the underlying transactional data enhanced with the ATM location data. So uh, other patterns that you can apply um, using KSQL DB is, is converting data formats. Um, in this particular case, we're converting uh, from JSON to Avro. Um, other patterns can be, you know, um, uh, you know, applying different patterns such as, such as functions, you know, masking your data as it's going through, uh, dropping particular attributes, number of different patterns that you can leverage using KSQL DB. And I'll, I'll step over to um, what our connectors look like. So we're, we're using the um, Salesforce connector for getting our account and contact information uh, onto Kafka topics. But, and we're also using the Databricks, uh, Confluent Databricks Delta Lake connector for landing that data in uh, Delta tables. And it's you know really easy to create a connector. Um, we just go add connector. Um, you search for the particular connector. We support all sorts of different connectors, including uh, source and sync connectors for SAP. Uh, Teradata um, is also another connector uh, for uh, a use case where you're modernizing your uh, data warehouse infrastructure. Oftentimes, customers have you know, Teradata systems that they want to source data from to get that into um, Delta Lake tables. We'll just go and take a look at this existing connector that I previously provisioned. Um, and it's, you know, just a matter of uh, selecting the different topics that you want to um, land in your Delta Lake tables. Um, specifying the particular data format that the topics are in. We support uh, Avro, JSON, and Protobuf. Um, specify our authentication mechanism for authenticating for uh, reading the data from the Kafka topics. And then there's a number of um, Databricks uh, Delta Lake specific parameters, including the host name, HTTP path, uh, token for authentication, uh, specifying the specific database if you don't want to use the default database. Um, and then uh, other things like, you know, mapping uh, your tables to your topics that provides a mechanism for renaming um, your, your tables. If you don't want to use your topic naming convention, you can specify something else here. And then a variety of other options, um, including the ability to automatically create the Delta Lake table if it doesn't exist uh, before. Um, and then authentication uh, information for um, accessing the, the S3 staging bucket where the data is staged before being appended to the Delta Lake tables. Um, and that, that's really it. And it's just a matter of you know, clicking next and deploying the connector. Um, and we could go back and we, we see if we've got, got data coming through. Uh, so as you've seen, uh, being able to pull data from those on-prem systems across cloud sources like Salesforce and stream that into real time directly over to Databricks allows organizations to unlock those next level analytic use cases. So with Confluent and Databricks, you get a complete real time event streaming and analytic solution for all your data for better predictions and decision making delivered at scale with speed, security, and the, real, the reliability that today's world requires. 
So some quick calls to action before we close out. Uh, you can sign up for free at confluent.io slash confluent uh, cloud and get 400 free credits uh, that you can use over 60 days to test out the platform for yourself and your business. Uh, to help your experimentation, please check out developer.confluent.io for loads of good content. Uh, and most importantly, thank you. Thank you for spending your time uh, with us today and have a wonderful rest of the conference. So from a questions perspective, I think we're, we're a little tight on time, but uh, our booth is 532, uh, so please do stop by and uh, talk with some of our, our folks there. Uh, they'd love to chat.